Hey y'all, uh, Attribution Guy here. Uh, I'm gonna quickly go through the first stage of uh, assessing your Marketo measure or visible instance as someone who first inherits it, right? So someone leaves the company, you hire someone new, or you're that new guy that was hired to take a look at an instance, and you're looking to figure out how is this set up? What do I need to do to maybe optimize this and run through this? This exercise also is really good for, hey, we've been running with Marketo Measure or Visible for three, four years. Let's reevaluate this, right? So <clears throat> this is kind of part one of that. I'm gonna break this into chunks so that it's just easy to move through the videos. So your Marketo Measure or Visible loads you go to my account settings. Obviously, if you're looking at the dashboards, you can identify potential areas where it needs to get optimized. But I think it's best, obviously, to start in the area in which it all really begins. Um, if you run through an implementation, you have to start here anyways, right? So today we're just going to work through the reporting section, which is what you see right here. Uh, we'll cover the other ones at a later time, but I'm going to break down what's in these sections. So you'll see here uh, when you click on every touch attribution or as it loads onto that, you have the attribution model. So what this means is you get to choose if you want to attribute revenue based upon account, contact role, primary contact role, converted lead emails, so on and so forth. The, the most common here is, con, uh, I'm sorry, is the account ID. Uh, if you're a company that just crushes it on contact roles, go for it, that's the way to go. I wouldn't go any more limited than, than that. Uh, if you go primary, there's you know, obviously just one and that's, you're just trying to figure out attribution for the, how that individual person engaged on the op. I don't think that's worth the value there. And then uh, the converted lead email, which again, I just I just don't think that's the way you want to go. So uh, that is the most common, but some clients do use contact role. Uh, default dashboard object. So the default dashboard object uh, is the object in which our, the, the, the Marketo measure tool uses inside of Discover to report on. So. You can either report on the lead, the contact of the case. Cases, I don't think I've ever seen that used in the four to five years in which I've been in this product. But if you're a, a, a company in which you use only contacts, you don't have a lead conversion, or if you if you you do, but you just don't use leads inside the CRM, contact is the way to go, right? Because there's no lead conversion. So that's where you would use contact. So lead and contact. Uh, these these are the ones you don't really touch. Enable custom stages, custom attribution model. This is typically part of the tiering of the tool in which you are given. So you're either tier one, tier two, or tier three, and those are preset in there. Uh, if you have deeper questions about those, you can obviously reach out to a rep or whoever manages it, or maybe someone internally understands what your tiering is. But uh, that's those are preset, and now that's all done there. Uh, a few a few, th few other things in which I'll call out. Uh, boomerang again this preset best based upon the tiering in which you have uh, but boomerang what that enables you to do is uh, if you have custom stages and you want to be able to look at how many times has someone become an MQL prior to the opportunity getting closed boomerang stages count the number of times that MQL stage gets hit so if they keep getting recycled and hit MQL 1 MQL 2 and MQL 3 you know your Salesforce doesn't say 1 2 and 3 but our system acknowledges that they hit that that many times and we acknowledge that within our dashboards and, and within our data points. And so that's all that is. Again, it's just all about tiering, but you can't really do much about that if, if depending on the tier in which you purchase. All right, segments. Segments is a piece in which you want to be able to look at this area here, or looking at an invalid field. That's fine, not, not a big deal. Uh, but again, you could see, if you see something like that, then you're then you know, hey, we're reading a field on here that is inhibiting our segments to work. Segments only apply to your Discover dashboard. So what we do with segments here, what what segments really is is 
when you think of when you're in Salesforce or you're in your Dynamics instance, you have filters in which you can choose from based upon the object or the table in which you have and the field itself. Those, those aren't inside of your Marketo measure instance. And so what we do is we can read off the lead or the contact object, we can read off of the account or the opportunity object and create those specific values to do that. So good example here is if you're doing ABM and you have tier one, tier two, and tier three of your, or I worked, yeah, I worked with a client that used the TAC. So they, they have a TAC one, a TAC two, a TAC three. So TAC one is their, you know, a handful of top accounts they're going after. TAC two is that uh, mid range of 100 to 1,000 uh, accounts. And then your TAC three is just kind of a general, um, they meet a certain persona or, or, or whatnot, but they don't really apply to the maybe the range in which you're targeting. So that from an ABM perspective. So you could actually pull that into here and use attack one, attack two, attack three inside of your Discover dashboard. So if you're just not a marketer that's using Salesforce dashboards or using the fields, like using that information in there and you want it all to live inside of Discover, that's where this is used. So if you're giving an audit and this is blank, this is something that can get enhanced and create immediate value for you within your dashboards inside of the Discover. Marketing spin. Marketing spin is uh, the way in which you would manually upload cost into our system. And so that ROI gets calculated inside of our Discover dashboards. Again, the Discover dashboards here. So that's available to you. Uh, you, uh, you would simply just choose a date range, uh, download the current cost, and you would see, do we have any costs that were actually added to this? If there's no cost added to it, then you know you're not doing ROI reporting across all these other channels. Uh, the one caveat to this is if you have your ads connections set up, which is here, and this will be on another call, uh, if that is connected, we are gonna pull in the cost off of those into our Discover dashboards, but the cost does not get pulled into the sheet, the, the, the CSV file here. So uh, it might be a little confusing, but you would see those costs inside the Discover dashboards and um, specifically the ROI report. So again, if, if you just inherited an instance and that there's no cost in those whatsoever, as far as like past campaigns you ran, events, webinars, whatever, those aren't there, then you know like, hey, I can create immediate value from an ROI. Um, touch point settings. This is where we can suppress or remove touch points. Now, for anyone that is brand new to this tool, that's very confusing. Um, this was confusing for me for at least two years when I was doing this product. So what, what this means is you can remove a buyer touch point from the CRM. I know that I just read it to you, but hear me out. So what this does is our system, Marketo Measure, in our database creates a touch point, pushes that to your CRM, and let's say your C, uh, we have had touch points inside your CRM for uh, six years, and you only want data in there for five years because you know you pay money for uh, the amount of data in which you're using your CRM, and so you say we're we're going to cut that off. Well, you can remove those touch points from ever happen, like from from being in your system, so it saves space inside of your CRM, but all that data is still inside your Discover, which is really nice, right? So you can still get all that great reporting inside of the Discover dashboards, even though it may no longer be inside your CRM. Cool. Suppression of a touch point is that we acknowledge a touch point happening in our system, but we never allow it to go into your CRM. So that touch point actually never gets generated there. If that's the case, it also will never get generated inside of our Discover dashboards. I would say it, that's the case for 99% of our dashboards. There is uh, one dashboard that still shows those, uh, which is our engagement path. But other than that, it, it removes that from the buyer's journey, it removes that from the lead engagement, contact engagement, all of that. So it's no longer there. So if you notice, if you're new to the tool, uh, you inherited this, or if you're just brand new trying to figure out this tool, if you, the biggest thing that you could do here is suppress the touch points from your company, right? You don't need to uh, create kind of cloudy the information of touch points 
uh, off of you know landing pages and this and that by touch points happening by your own team. So remove the you know the easy one here, right? I can do contact email uh, contains at the company, right? Boom, done, right? <laughs> we're gonna get we're not gonna allow those to no longer go there. If those touch points are already in the system, right? You notice this, you've inherited it, it's already in the CRM. You do the suppression, it will remove them as well as suppress it from ever happening again. So there is a little bit of that happening as well. Touch point fields I never touch. This is kind of this very niche thing for um, a very small sub subset of clients. So if you, again you have this tool and you got this, I just would not worry about this. Um, it's uh, it's just not a piece that's heavily used at this time. So uh, that's uh, part one of inheriting a new instance or running your own audit and trying to understand what's going on. Uh, I'll come out with a few more videos covering the channels and integrations piece and then the CRM connection as well. So we'll cover those. It'll be maybe a three-part series, but we'll find out together. Uh, feel free to leave uh, any questions in the comments. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.